what is it that defines a beautiful face? What is it that women really try to... Contour. Uh, con- yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what is it in particular? Like I Their jawline, Chris- their cheekbones. Christiana calls it three, right? The three? Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Christiana, yeah. 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 The three. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Is that there's a like a beautiful line on everybody, from the angle of the mouth to the ear. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. So that's one of them. And I just don't see it on you for two reasons. I don't tell you about it. There's also another line under the eye right here that goes from the side of the nose mm-hmm. directly back to the same point. And that's where we want to fill it with fillers and, you know, mm-hmm. lime and stuff like that. But as far as fat reduction, the other thing is you want to define the jawline. And yours is there, it's just soft. I'm going to fill her up afterwards, too. So, like, after you like her, I'm going to go over there and make sure I don't have it, like... I don't think you'll need to. Really? We'll find out. I don't okay. think you'll need to. <laughs> but really, this line here should be parallel with this line here. So there's two aspects to this. I've got to define the jaw, and I've got to reduce a buccal fat pad right here that's making that shadow hard to see. Mm -hmm. So that's the buccal fat pad, and then I need to liposuction all of this out too, which is just cheek fat, superficial cheek fat, and then your chin, obviously. Everything needs to come out of it. Not be skeletonized, but it's got to be absolutely fat free. (laughs) To get that defined jawline. I want to tell you. Go ahead. I have a chin implant. Yeah, that's gonna only enhance my results, so I'm not I'm not scared by oh, that. I but thank you for telling me yeah. now. <laughs> Sorry. I want to get all of that done out. Yay. So that's one area one. What is this? Did you know? Okay. <laughs> Area three. That's a <clears throat> makeup tutorials on Instagram? Dr. Zelkin? Of course. You're doing exactly I've, what they're doing. And I, follow, and I follow the <laughs> essential so trends. Well, honestly, it's all independent Imagine learning, too. Imagine it's brown. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, beiges and browns, like, skin yeah, color. Yeah, I like to, like, contour lessons. I feel like I always have to put so much, like, the shade on, and it looks obvious. So I'm going to do the buckle fat removal first. Okay. All right. And the reason I do that first is because I really, really want to make sure when I do my liposuction that I don't over resect. Oh, okay. You get a five millimeter scar. Is that okay? That's fine. All right. Not even. And then if you really want to hide it, what I'll do for you is I'll put a scar in the crease here. Okay. And the scar in the crease here. Okay. 
I'm gonna do all my numbing now, so. <laughs> I'd like to spend the next 20 minutes or so discussing the, uh, the subsequent steps of the operation. Uh, it's really important to, again, evaluate the patient during the marking stage and to understand her desires. Uh, this is a patient who gained a lot of weight for a different procedure. The procedure was performed and she couldn't uh, lose the weight that she gained. Um, on evaluating her face, it was notable that she had a lot of lower facial volume uh, that was uh, contributed to by the, uh, the weight gain that she simply couldn't lose with diet and exercise alone. Uh, on examination, she had um, uh, little contribution from the musculature as well as bony width uh, to her lower face. It really was all soft tissue. She also had roundness to her cheeks. I therefore um, suggested and advised her to strongly consider buccal fat pad removal in conjunction with the uh, face type procedure. The buccal fat pad is, uh, is uh, accessed easily uh, through a small incision just, uh, just uh, across the way from the upper molars. Um, a two centimeter incision is all you need. Uh, immediately you're going to recognize the glistening of a yellow fat pad. And as we all know, uh, for those of us who have performed uh, craniofacial surgery or trauma surgery of the face, this, this fat pad, uh, when it wants to come out, will let you know that it wants to come out. It's very easy to find and a skilled plastic surgeon. Uh, should be able to find it without difficulty. The smaller the incision, the less uh, likelihood that there's going to be uh, wound-related complications, and I think two centimeters is a pretty conservative amount. Uh, my incision uh, takes place above the Stenson's duct. Um, some people advise doing it below the Stenson's duct and above the bite line. However, I feel that this keeps me uh, in, the, in the line of safety. Um, this woman had, uh, you know, multilobular uh, fat pad. I performed a, a conservative resection of the main fat pad that comes out on block. There is a small uh, blood vessel that provides it uh, blood supply, and that could be divided with scissors and cauterized with the uh, electric cauter, as you see me using here. Um, it's a very satisfying uh, operation, and then as you can see, the, uh, the amount of fat that is uh, resected really does vary person uh, to person. Uh, this is performed with the patient uh, completely awake, and I close the wound with a uh, 5 vicro suture or two. Um, very little bleeding during the portion of the case because I provide local anesthesia with 1% lidocaine with epinephrine um, beforehand. I try not to instill that into the fat pad itself, but sol uh, solely in the, uh, the mucosa. Um, after one side is complete, you can uh, already see that there's an improvement in the contour of that side of the face. Um, it's almost as though she's sucking in her cheek on that side, and again, you see she's completely awake. For anonymity's sake, I did uh, provide glasses for her. I then performed the same procedure on the other side, again, uh, resecting the fat pad, which is uh, very obvious. It, uh, there should be no question uh, what it is. If you are questioning what it is, you probably don't have the bubble fat pad. Um, always keep one side resection out so you can compare it to the contralateral side. Unless the patient has a pre-existing uh, asymmetry, you want to make sure that the resected amount is uh, symmetric. You don't want to create any deformity um, in a pursuit to provide an improved facial contour. Again, I always lay my uh, two buckle fat pads side by side. Um, I wash out the uh, area with some normal saline and I close the wound. Following this portion of the case, I consider uh, the face tighten liposuction. Uh, I begin, as you've seen in other videos, with installation of local uh, tumescent. Uh, in the face, I have no need for a tumescent cannula, and I simply use a 22 gauge spinal needle that's three and a half inches long uh, through as many, as many pores or access sites as I need. I really do like to use the, the, um, the access sites that I'll use for the liposuction um, because even though this needle is very small, you know, the less pokes the better, especially on the face of an Asian woman. The three access sites that I've chosen for this patient are um, just uh, anterior to the lobule in that crease, so it's completely hidden, as well as in the submental crease. Um, unlike platysmoplasty, I don't feel any need to go anterior or posterior to the submental crease, as a small stab wound is very well hidden in that, uh, in that anatomic position. I, I, uh, I use about 250 cc's of uh, local for the face, and again, in one liter of solution, it's about 80, um, 75 cc's of 2% lidocaine and one and a half ampules of uh, epinephrine. I also use uh, sodium bicarb for comfort, although this is optional. Um, I don't stare at, uh, at my uh, bag of tumescence um, to see that I have exact 
uh, amounts of two mesonin, obviously uniformity is important. So if you feel like that you'll have more uniformity with um, with the recording of the um, the two mesons in, then by all means do that. Um, in my case, I, I my endpoint is not peau d'orange, but it's a certain level of terger that's uniform throughout all the tissues. Um, I began uh, these procedures by documenting very carefully uh, how much was going in on each side to make sure it was symmetric, but um, almost invariably, um, um, I know uh, when the uh, tumescence portion of the case is complete because the patient is completely numb, completely comfortable, is giving me no feedback that she's uncomfortable, and there's a uniform terger to her uh, submental triangles, submentum, and uh, lower third of her face um, between, uh, underneath that line between the tragus and the corner of the mouth. This portion of the case, I cannot emphasize enough, is the most important part of the case. The patient needs to gain your trust right now for the operation to be successful so you can do as much operating as you need without the patient's discomfort stopping you. In addition, for this operation to become very popular, it's important that patients can tolerate it awake and I do encourage everybody who's considering or is, has adopted the uh, face tight and body tight technology not to underestimate the importance of complete anesthesia if you're going to pursue this with a patient awake. Um, I take as many passes as I feel necessary uh, to perform the operation. Again, the landmarks I use are the marionette lines, the line between the corner of the mouth of the commissure and the tragus, um, and then I create in the hyoid bone. And I create a rectangle, two triangles in the submental region, and a subsequent uh, quadrangle um, below the uh, below the malar region. Um, please do take your time uh, with this portion of the procedure. Uh, you want to make a mental note of the, uh, of the marginal mandibular nerve. Uh, the patient, uh, since the tumescence is certainly in the line of fire, the, the nerve um, is going to have some weakness of her lower lip as well as numbness at the end of the operation. Um, she should be warned of this ahead of time and she should be reassured that in several hours this should resolve. Although with some swelling and even uh, on occasion some neuropraxia, it could take up to days uh, for it to resolve completely. Um, this patient uh, is sedated with, um, with 10 milligrams of uh, Valium as well as um, one Percocet or 5 milligrams of Oxycodone, 300 milligrams of Acetaminophen, and 8 milligrams of Zofran. That's all compounded into a single pill. Uh, this was enough for the patient to feel absolutely nothing during the procedure, um, and that's because I take so much time um, in the tumescence uh, portion of the case. Uh, at the end of this, I do ask the patient if she feels anything, and I do rub uh, my finger over all areas that I plan to treat to make sure that she feels absolutely nothing at all. The patient is now ready for the body tight or face tight portion of the case. That's why you see that I'm applying the, uh, the aquasonic gel uh, that's sterile. Step four is the face tight technology. You've seen me use this in uh, many videos before. Um, in this patient, I use very conservative settings because she is Asian and I do not want to burn any skin on the external surface. Uh, the patient was borderline as far as patient selection. Um, I felt that uh, you know the patient requested it, she wanted it by name, and that she did have a significant weight gain with a desire to really enhance the uh, sculpted look of her face. Because she wanted a sculpted look, I felt that the face tight technology would give me the best chance at defining that jawline that she had prior to her weight gain. Uh, the body tight, however, was used very conservatively in this case, and I kept the external temperature cutoff quite low, as we know in patients uh, like Latinas and Asians, that any burns are going to be enhanced by hyperpigmentation. So I can't emphasize enough the importance of being conservative uh, in the right patient. I performed the, I performed the uh, tightening um, um, throughout all the uh, triangles, and I, at this time I am recording the amount of energy in to make sure that the patient has equal energy. Um, in this patient, I was cut off by the external temperature cut off more so than the internal temperature, but I did get the internal temperature into the mid-50s without difficulty. Um, again, for those of you who haven't seen my videos before, the uh, face tight technology uh, is a bipolar technology which distinguishes it from other competitive products like Thermi um, in that you are very, very carefully controlling the position of the, radi uh, the radio frequency energy in the form of heat. Uh, with monopolar alternatives, you have a... Uh, you basically can have uh, the heat energy diffuse around the tip. The same goes for smart lipo, um, but in this technology with the two wands, one above the skin, the anode and the diode, you're carefully controlling the heat and you're making sure that it doesn't go deep to the deep diode. So as long as you stay superficial uh, to the platysma and just underneath the skin, you see that I'm constantly feeling and looking for the feedback 
uh, you're going to notice that um, there's going to be no deep energy and you're not going to see that lower lip twitch once. Um, some, uh, some other providers are going to um, be a little bit further away from the mental nerve um, in, the, in the sake of safety, but the more of these cases you do, the more comfort you can get. The same goes for liposuction. Um, following the uh, conservative uh, face tight technology, the endpoints again are about 10 to 20 percent contracture of the uh, tissue that you can see, as well as getting to the internal temperature cutoff uh, within. Uh, following this part of, the, part of the procedure, as always, I will perform uh, liposuction. I'm constantly evaluating the patient, I'm constantly feeling for heat, I'm constantly feeling for contour changes, um, and the next step of the case, uh, as you can see here, is going to be liposuction uh, with, um, with single Mercedes tip, uh, two millimeter cannula in this patient. Uh, debulking was not necessary, this is more of a sculpture procedure. I talked about that Z-line uh, in the preoperative markings, and I really do want to hollow out the area between the jaw and the, um, and the zygomatic uh, arch. By doing this, it's going to create a beautiful contour, and hopefully the patient will not need to use a contour palette um, with her makeup. This is the objective of the case. Because she has excess fat, but not too much fat, I can go directly to the lipo sculpture portion of the case. Uh, she did require a little debulking, as you saw before. <clears throat> and unlike the um, tumescence uh, portion of the case, it's really important to document and to visualize the, uh, the output of the cannula at this point. Lipo sculpture is very sensitive in this area of the face. Um, right now I'm in the submental triangle. As I work my way up over the mandibular angle, I become quite superficial. So I'm not only looking for volume, feeling for um, you know, contour regularities, but I'm staying very superficial um, everywhere really because the more superficial, a la the Gasparoni technique, the more tightening in conjunction with the face that I'm going to achieve. In this patient, I don't expect to see significant results on the table because of the amount of tumescence that was instilled, which was a total of 150 cc, I'm sorry, 250 cc's, but um, I do feel that there is complete laxity of the soft tissue uh, after recession of the, uh, of the fat. Optimizing er ergonomics is very important. Um, I'm reaching over the table in this uh, portion of the case to, um, to really define that submental triangle. Um, it's not ideal. Uh, it's another point of the case you're going to see that I'm going to work my way back around uh, to get better ergonomics and to really work, focus on uh, her facial contour improvement. Again, this is, a, uh, this is a game of millimeters here. Even though it is liposculpture, this is the, uh, the most artistic and also risky uh, liposculpture that we perform. Um, there's a lot of nerves. Uh, those of us who have read uh, um, Dingman's paper understand that uh, the, the, mandibular, uh, the marginal mandibular nerve is going to course uh, over the uh, mandibular angle uh, at around this point, uh, or at around this portion, uh, several centimeters anterior to the lobule. So you've got to always think about it. Uh, you can see my finger, my thumb in there really kind of protecting me from causing any injury. I'm also constantly talking to the patient to see if there's any change in the way she speaks. Uh, and, uh, and, and there's not. The more procedures you perform, I think the, uh, the more comfortable you feel with this. But uh, another thing early on that I was really concerned about was injury to the facial nerve. If you stay superficial, you're going to be out of the way. Um, other potential uh, injuries that you can cause during this case, of course, would be injury to the sense and duct, uh, which could be appreciated uh, by the patient uh, during the procedure. But if you take out only the yellow fat that delivers itself, the likelihood of causing injury is very low. Obviously, when you close that wound, you've got to be very careful about the stitches placed as well. Uh, again, I'm really uh, taking my time. The two things that I'm uh, very, um, very particular about in this area um, is staying superficial, but not superficial enough to see any, any bruising of the skin. I really don't want to see any bruising at all. Also, in the, uh, in, the liposuction, uh, in the liposuction tubing, I don't want to see any blood. This should be a bloodless procedure, uh, truly, between the radio frequency uh, assisted lipolysis as well as the, um, the epinephrine and the tumescent solution, there should be no blood at all. You can already see prior to completion of the operation that there's a contour uh, over the mandibular angle. This is because I'm really trying to sculpt out the triangles and the polygons. Um, as, I, as I discussed briefly earlier, uh, polygons are really, uh, really kind of the name of the game in facial contouring. Uh, this is one area of the body that uh, even in women, uh, beautiful feminine look, um, is defined uh, by gentle uh, curves, lazy S's, and uh, straight lines. This can be um, evidenced by looking at uh, you know cosmetics magazines and uh, talking to makeup artists to really see what it is that they do to create the contours they create. 
Again, I'm constantly protecting nerves with my, my index finger and thumb. I'm constantly aware of where I am. Um, anterior to the ear is another area where you can cause injury to the greater auricular nerve. And I'm constantly putting my finger on the soft tissue where I think that is to prevent um, passing point and causing injury. Uh, you can see that uh, even on the table with the 250 cc's of tumescent, I'm starting to achieve a really beautiful symmetric result. Uh, and I anticipate that this patient who will have her final results um, by six months of time is going to have a very pretty, even early result. The results of buccal fat resection are immediate. However, the results of the, uh, of the phase tighten liposuction, as we all know, takes four to six months. Um, I really continue to go back and forth. One area you want to make sure to get is the, um, is the preauricular soft tissue. There tends to be a preparotid fat pad that uh, if, you, if you leave that behind is noticeable by a vertical shadow on the face. You can kind of see it even here, my index finger. So I'm going to go back in my final pass and try to address these areas to make sure that the patient has a beautiful result. All the while, I want to make sure that, uh, that I'm using my finger to protect myself from passing point and causing neuropraxias. Um, as well as pain in the post-operative period. Anytime you bluntly attach a mu attack a muscle, it's going to create some degree of pain in the post-operative period. So a really good barometer of how you've done is to ask the patient after the uh, anesthetic wears off how they're feeling. Um, ideally, a patient feels uh, very comfortable um, even after the anesthetic wears off. However, if you do uh, ding the bone or hit a muscle, it's going to create a uh, Charlie horse type pain in the following uh, days. Um, at the end of the procedure, I noticed that uh, with the conservative face tight uh, radio frequency um, lipolysis as well as the conservative liposuction, that the skin has not been uh, injured in any way whatsoever. There's not even uh, any hint of thermal injury. Um, uh, but again, uh, being obsessive as I am, I will go back until I feel that I've really, really addressed all these areas. So every time I think I'm done, I see one area and I'll go back and get it. Again, you see how superficial I'm staying here. Um, Feathering is important, staying superficial is important. What I really want to do for this patient, as you can see here, is create that jawline. I want to see a shadow. She's a pretty young woman. She wants to regain her, um, her pre-weight gain spelt. She can't do it in her face. I think I've given her three really good tools in this operation to give her a great chance of, um, of, of having that beautiful um, contour that she had in the preoperative state. You can see the straight line now from her cheekbone down to her jaw. That is a sign of having the buccal fat pattern removal. She no longer has those curvy chubby cheeks um, and this is only going to be enhanced when the swelling goes down. I now finally do dress the wounds. Um, I close the wounds with 6-0 proline, although this is, uh, this is an option. The wounds are so small that uh, they can heal on their own. It's smaller than a drain that we use for a facelift. However, uh, for good measure, I will always put stitches in my patients. Um, um, if, they, if they request it in any way. I then cleanse the bedding down off the face to make sure that the patient doesn't have any post-operative itching because if she itches, it's going to make it difficult for her to wear her compression garment. The compression garment I place is uh, zero form and an ABD. Uh, thank you so much for all your time.